We're going to continue solving rational equations in today's lesson. Today's lesson looks different than yesterday's lesson because yesterday's lesson was we were looking for the value of x in a rational equation when given the value of y. Today we're going to be finding the point of intersection of two rational equations. So we do many of the same steps as yesterday and here are what you can refer to as we're moving along through these examples. So in the first example, we have the function f of x and the fun function g of x, and we're asked to find the point of intersection. So the point of intersection would be when f of x is equal to g of x. So we're going to set these two equations equal to each other. So that's going to be x squared minus 8x plus 6 over x plus 4. And we're going to set it equal to x squared minus 3x minus 4 over x plus 4. So whenever I have two equations that have a denominator that is the same, I can just eliminate those denominators and set the numerators equal to each other. x squared minus 8x plus 6 equals x squared minus 3x minus 4. So that's really what you want to do. You want to have basically fractions on both side, sides of the equal sign that have the same denominator so you can get rid of that denominator. Okay. So for example, if you had like 6 over 3 equals x plus 1 over 3, you could eliminate the 3s and just do 6 equals x plus 1 to find the value of x. So we're we're using that same concept with these that just looks a little looks a little different. So we're actually going to now continue with the same steps that we did in yesterday's. We're going to move all the terms to one side of the equal sign. So if I move everything from the left to the right side of the equal sign, I'm going to be subtracting x squared, adding 8x and subtracting 6. That'll eliminate it from the left side so that I have 0 equals, but what I do to the left, I need to do the right. So I'm going to be writing these terms underneath the terms that they are like alike with. So minus x squared plus 8x minus 6. So x squared minus x squared is 0. Those cancel. Negative 3x plus 8x is 5x. Negative 4 minus 6 is negative 10. And now we're going to factor what's on the right side of our equal sign. So 0 equals, if I divide out of 5, I'm left with x minus 2. And now I need to only set that part of that, that I factored that contains a variable equal to 0. So I actually only have x minus 2. I only have one solution in this problem. So x equals positive 2. And there's my answer. Let's move on to example number 2. In example number 2, I have two functions, f of x and g of x, and I'm asked to find the point of intersection. So again, I'm going to set these two functions equal to each other. So 3 over x minus 1 plus x over x plus 3 equals 9x plus 3 over, and if I go ahead and factor this, I can factor that denominator as x plus 3 times x minus 1, right? Because 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, and 3 plus negative 1 is positive 2. So we factored it. So the first thing I need to do in a situation like this is I need to simplify the left side of the equal sign. So I'm adding two fractions, basically, with unlike denominators. So I need to add them. I need to first create a common denominator and then add the numerator. So what would that common denom denominator be? The LCD would be x minus 1 times x plus 3. So what do I need to do to make each of these denominators be that? Well, the one on the left, I need to multiply that numerator times x plus 3. And the one on the right, I need to multiply that numerator times x minus 1. So when I do that, watch how I write this. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute this 3 to the inside of the parentheses over here. And I get 3x plus 9. 
and then on in my fraction, let's say on the right, I'm going to distribute this x into each term in those parentheses, x minus 1. So I get plus x squared minus x over x minus 1 times x plus 3 equals, and let's rewrite what's on the right side of our equal sign. So now on the left, I can actually just combine like terms. So x squared, I can't combine with anything. So I have x squared, 3x and negative x can be combined. So I get 2x and then 9 is all by itself. Plus 9 over x minus 1 times x plus 3 equals 9x plus 3 over x plus 3 times x minus 1. All right, you following me here? I know there's a lot going on. So at this point, we have basically two fractions on e or a fraction on each side of the equal sign with the same denominator. That's what we've created. That's what you want. So we can eliminate those denominators and just set our numerators equal to each other. What do I do at this point? I need to move everything to one side of the equal sign. Now you've seen me on every example, I've moved everything to the right. I don't have to do that. And I like to have an A value that's positive, so I'm actually gonna move what's over here to the left. So I'm gonna subtract 9x and subtract 3. What I do to the right side, I have to do to the left. It eliminates it from the right side, and I'm left with x squared, minus 7x plus 6. So at this point, I need two numbers that multiply to 6 and add to negative 7. So I know the numbers are the same, or have the same sign, and we're adding to negative 7. What are those numbers? Negative 6 and negative 1. So x minus 6 and x minus 1. That's how this factors. So now what do you do? You set each of those factors equal to 0, and you solve because that's how we solve quadratics and that's basically what we've done here. So when I set each of those equal to zero, I get x equals one and positive six. But remember, we want to make sure that we do not have an extraneous solution. So I'm looking for in these solutions to see if there's a number when I plug it in for x, that I would get zero in the denominator. If I plug in one for x, I would get a zero in the denominator. This right here is an extraneous solution. It would create a zero in the denominator, which means our solution is x equals six. And that concludes your notes over day two, solving rational equations. I hope it was helpful.